Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do a Friday Reads video. It's the way I close out the week in reading and the week in bookish things that happen. This week there has not been a whole lot of bookish stuff going on. Not a whole lot of reading, but we'll get to that when we do the actual Friday Reads portion of the video at the end. Suffice to say, my reading life has been a bit of a mess this week, and that is largely because, and I don't want to go into this too much because it's not my story to tell, there was a death in my foster son's family, and we had to go to the funeral with him, which was on a reservation, and that kind of defined the week for all of us. And the one bookish thing I can say about it is that this experience actually amplified my feelings about the book The Yield by Tara June Winch, which I had finished last week and talked about in last week's Friday Reads video. I will link that down below. So check that out if you want to hear more about the book. But being on the reservation and being on this emotional high from finishing a book that I really love, which talks about the indigenous experience and land rights and history and who gets to write history and ways in which we have wronged the indigenous people, was all really amplified by going to a reservation. It made all the lessons that I got from the book all the more pointed. And I really think it's going to be difficult to top The Yield as my favorite read of the year in 2021. But maybe that's also because I'm still on this emotional high of having finished it and loved it, and now I've had this experience that made it seem all the more poignant to me. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. The other thing that I would say about this experience of having been on a reservation this week is that people on the reservation take the pandemic and precautions very seriously. It is the safest I have felt out and about in the world, other than getting vaccinated, since last March of 2020. That's how safe it was, and that's how seriously people are taking it on the reservation. It was really admirable to see, and it made me even more angry about leaving the reservation and seeing all of the people who don't take it seriously. Masks are required everywhere you go. If you don't have a mask, they don't want to hear it. You will not be allowed in the building. We went into a restaurant where you ordered from the counter, and the counter was covered in plastic curtains, so you can still see through, but you are completely protected and separated from the employee on the other side of the counter. It looked a little bit like an episode of Dexter, but that's how seriously they're taking it. They also have hand sanitizer stationed at every door or every entrance to a building. You are required to use it before you walk in. And a lot of buildings, including the grocery store and the hotel where we stayed, have digital screens that will take your temperature when you walk in. And you are required to use them before you are allowed to access the building. It was just really great. There are even people wearing masks as they walk down the street in open air, which is not something you see in most other areas. Usually if you're outside, you take the mask off. And I know there's been a lot of controversy about that. Me, personally, I am fully vaccinated, and I still frequently double mask if I'm in the grocery store. I still wear a mask if I'm around other people, because I don't know what's going on, and I value my safety. So that's something I continue to do. Anyway, I don't want to be very political. I just wanted to say what a great response, and how great to see a community that is trying to protect each other and protect their elders. That was really nice. And again, I don't really want to get into it too much because it's not my story to tell, but I think it was great for my foster son to be able to reconnect with his family and have some time with them. Hopefully it will be nice down the road. There have been a couple of instances, not recently, where people have said to me that I should just call him my son. I shouldn't refer to him as my foster son. And it hasn't happened in a while, but I feel like this is a perfect example of why there is a difference. Because I think a lot of people don't know the difference between adoption and fostering. And the difference is that in an adoption, you legally take custody of that kid. And in fostering, they have their own family. And for me, I have never wanted to try to replace his family. I want to try to honor that relationship and the existence of that relationship. And at some point, as he gets older, he will be able to make decisions about chosen family in addition to his regular family, but we're not there yet. He's only 19, and he has his own parents, and I don't want to try to take that away from him, especially since he is Native and I am white. 
I don't want to be the white guy coming in and dictating terms of things or taking things away. So it is really important to me that I try to remember that he does have his own family and try to honor those relationships. And hopefully this week was good for that. And let's not talk about it anymore, because like I said, it is not my story to tell. It just is the biggest thing that happened this week. And it is the reason that there is not a whole lot of bookish stuff for me to talk about in this Friday Reads video. One thing I will say before we get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video is that it had somehow completely slipped my notice that May is AAPI Heritage Month, that is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage. And I really do want to try to honor that in some way, because with all of the violence and hate crimes that have been popping up against Asian Americans, I really want to try to be more intentional about including Asian American authors in my reading, and could there be a more perfect opportunity to do that? So I'm trying to think about a way I can fit an Asian American author in my reading in May. I already did a TBR in my wrap-up for the month of April, which I will also link down below if you would like to check that out. And I'm a, a little bit hesitant to add to it. This is why I'm terrible at TBRs, because things happen, priorities change, and I'm just really bad at sticking to them. I don't think of TBRs the way most people do, which is a very strict, you must read this type thing. I think of them as suggestions, options that I can pick from when I am looking for something else to read. So I'm thinking that this month might be a perfect time for me to read Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. I had picked this up and... I really want to read it. It's also unique because it is written in the format of a screenplay, and it is potentially a spoiler for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction this year. I'll link my prediction video for that down below as well. So I feel like this would be a perfect opportunity to do this. I had been thinking about a different book, but that book is also a fit for my June TBR, which I am still working on, because it is an LGBTQ book. So I think that means this one is the one that could be a priority here for AAPI Heritage Month. If you are reading anything to celebrate that this month, I would love to hear what you are reading. If you have recommendations, please put them in the comment section down below. But this is the one I am thinking I will try to fit in for this month. Another thing before I get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video that I want to mention, I did my Nomadland book versus movie comparison and published it today as I'm filming this, but yesterday for you. And I will link the video down below. If you're interested, check it out. I'd go a lot more in depth about the book and the movie than I did when I finished the book for my Friday Reads video last week and for my wrap up for April. So if you're interested, check it out. I'll link it down below. People tend not to really engage with the book versus movie comparisons. I just happen to find them interesting and I like doing them. And one thing I always try to remember as I do my channel is that it's supposed to be fun. That's why I called my channel Supposedly Fun. And it's important for me to try to do things that I find interesting and fun as well. So if you're interested, check it out. It was fun for me to make. So it's out there in the world. I will say, and this doesn't mean anything to you as a subscriber or a random viewer of this, but videos like that can do well over time because people will continue to look for comparisons of the book versus the movie. But I don't really care about that too much. To me, it's the ways in which the book was adapted that are interesting. I actually took a class in community college before I transferred to a college about adapting literature into film. And it was one of the most interesting classes that I took in my short college career. And that is the reason I find doing videos like that really interesting. It's just difficult to do them because I feel like I have to have both watched the movie and read the book recently in order to do them. Thankfully, I just finished the book Nomadland and I saw the movie maybe two months ago, so it's still very fresh in my mind. But anyway, if you're interested, check it out. Doesn't matter if you do, doesn't matter if you don't, but it's there and I enjoyed doing it. Guinness came in to say hello, and it's been a while since I had him in one of my videos, so I figured I would give him a chance to say hi hi, and now I'll let him go back to exploring. Let's get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video and talk about the things I failed at life trying to read. The first one is the audiobook. So I finished 
April with a clean slate. I did not have anything carrying over into the month of May. So I needed to pick up a new physical book and a new audio book because I'm trying to do two books at a time, one physical and one audio. So it just so happened that No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood became available as an audiobook through the Libby app. I had completely forgotten that I got on the hold list for this. I tend to do that. I get on a hold list and then I don't check what's on the hold list so things are a bit of a surprise. I don't know why. It just, you get a little burst of like, oh, that's available. And that's kind of fun sometimes. So I had been thinking that I wanted to read a different book by Patricia Lockwood first, her memoir, which is called Priest Daddy. And I was a little bit torn because this is on the shortlist for the Women's Prize. I will link my video reacting to that down below. But I don't know. I had really been thinking I wanted to do her memoir first. So at the end of the day, I decided to give it a try. And then another try. And then another try. Part of the problem is that I haven't really slept this week for obvious reasons, given what I talked about in the first half of the video. There's been a lot going on. Work has also been really busy. So my attention span for an audio has not been great. I've also tried to listen to a couple of podcasts and my attention span just keeps going in and out. And I don't think that's fair to the book. So that's one part of it. The other part is that I was really not enjoying the beginning of this book. So I was having a really hard time trying to force myself to engage with it and pay attention. And that's not great. So I think I got about 30 minutes in and realized I hadn't been paying attention to it. So I went back. I got about 15 minutes in, was still not paying attention. And then I tried to really force myself to pay attention last night. And I think I got maybe 25 minutes into the audio. And I just wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't vibing with the book at all. So I think I'm going to DNF this. And I'm not going to put it on my list of books that I have read in 2021, because like I said, I only made it at most 30 minutes into the audio of this book. I don't think I can claim to have read it <laughs> when it's a five hour audio book and I only got 30 minutes of it in. I certainly can't form an opinion about the book, not knowing where it goes after the first 30 minutes. I don't even really know where it goes in the first 30 minutes, because as I said, I was really struggling to pay attention to this book. So I'm telling you about it right now and that I am DNFing it, but I am not going to count it as something that I read. I'm not going to include it on my reading list, on the story graph, or anything like that. I just didn't get far enough to make that fair. So just know I DNF'd this. I still want to read her memoir, even though I did not really enjoy her fiction or the way this book seemed to be going. I am really intrigued by the idea of that memoir, and I do think she's a great writer, so I'm still going to look for a copy of Priest Daddy at some point, and I will get to that. I just, I don't know if I will try. No one is talking about this again. If you like Jenny Ophel's book Weather, you might love this. I really liked Department of Speculation by Jenny Ophel, but I did not get along with Weather too much. So maybe that's why this one wasn't quite vibing for me. The other book I was failing at life in trying to read this week was Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe. This is something that I have access to on NetGalley, and I am going to keep trying to finish this book. And in this case, it's definitely not the book's fault. It's just that, like I said, my attention span has not been great this week. There's been so much else going on. I've been tired. And the best time I have to read a physical book, even though this is an ebook, is at bedtime and I've been tired, so it's not working great. So this book is about a casino in Las Vegas. It's fictional, it's called Positano, which I suppose means that it's modeled after the Venetian a little bit, but it's fictional, obviously. So there's an explosion and a fire that destroys the casino. And then the book goes back and tells the story of a couple of different people who either live in Las Vegas or are visiting the casino in the months leading up to this accident. And I believe some of them might live, some of them might die. I don't know about that, but it just sounded really interesting to me. This was one of my most anticipated books of 2021. I will link that video down below as well. And 
the first person that you meet is a mathematician who make, drops out of school because he makes so much money playing poker online, but now he's going to try his hand at actual in-person poker. And that chapter was also a little bit difficult for me because it talks about math a lot and mathematical formulas and things like that in a way that's kind of quirky. Like, it's not asking you to understand them, but because I am really bad at math and I really don't like math, partially because I'm really bad at it, I was having a hard time engaging with it. I think it's more my mental state this week, but it took me forever to get through that first chapter about that person. And then the second chapter is about the history of the hotel, and I've only made it halfway through that one. So I'm barely into this book at all, but I am enjoying it. I think the writing is good. I'm looking forward to getting further into it. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, after this weekend, I'll be back on the reading train. But I mentioned in my April wrap-up where I talked about my May TBR that I was hoping to pick off a lot of things so I could get to Gone with the Wind. I'm not in good shape for that, obviously. I do still want to dedicate the latter part of the month to Gone with the Wind, but I don't know how a lot of these things are going to go. I had been hoping that I could pick off some things like Pruleith's book, A Serving of Scandal, this book whose name I'm afraid to mention on my channel because YouTube might flag me for language, or Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. I don't know how many of these are going to happen, especially now that I want to throw Interior Chinatown into the mix, but I'm going to see what I can get to, and then hopefully by the middle point of the month, I will be ready and able to pick up Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. That is my plan still, and again, I am not married to the idea that I have to read any of those books just to get to Gone with the Wind. They're just suggestions, if I can get through them. <laughs> so I'm going to try to work on Paradise Nevada this week. I was still enjoying it. No one is talking about this is going by the wayside, and I'm going to start another audiobook. I don't really know what audiobook I'm going to start. I did just get a notification from Libby right before I started filming this that something was available. I think it was The Liar's Club by Mary Carr. I had forgotten I had a hold on that as well. So maybe that one, maybe I'll look for something that would be appropriate for AAPI month and then still try to do Interior Chinatown on the side. We'll see. The whole point of my reading year in 2021 is that I don't really want to put pressure on myself that I have to do certain things. I want to be able to try to mood read my way through the year and make things really easy for myself because in my first two years on booktube, I started reading a lot of things at the same time and I started really getting into this mindset that I have to do certain things. And I am somebody who doesn't do well with a reading plan. I like being spur of the moment with that. So we'll see how all of that goes. I'm gonna pick an audiobook and I'll talk to you about it next week. I am going to finish Paradise Nevada or at least try to work my way and get in a little bit further. There is another advanced copy that I have on NetGalley called Early Morning Riser. And I might try to get to that. I might pick up one of these um, other books that I am struggling to pick up right now <laughs> and see if I can get one of them done. My goal is that by the middle of the month, I can pick up Gone with the Wind. People have said that this is a fast read. This will be part of my Pulitzer Prize project and see if I can finish this by June because I want to start June with a clean slate. That is something that is really important to me because in June, I like to read LGBTQ books. If you follow along, you know that because I've talked about it a fair amount. Anyway, I will leave it there. I'd love to hear what you've had going on this week. If you've had more success than I have with reading anything, please let me know if you want to talk about the weather. Oh, the weather in Missoula has been so bizarre. It gets hot, then it gets cold again, then it gets wet, then it gets really dry. It's bizarre. It's really cloudy right now, so the lighting is a little bit weird, but you know, it is what it is. So if you're having a nice spring, let me know because mine is all over the place. <laughs> anyway, as always, I really appreciate your time. I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.